Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to go ahead and wire up the shop today. Stay tuned. Now before we go on any further, uh, I'm not a licensed electrician. Uh, I've been doing this for a number of years, but I just wanted to show you how I wire up and get the shop ready for drywall, and uh, insulation and so forth. You got to do the wiring first. So with that being said, I want you to know that if you're not comfortable doing this wiring yourself, hire somebody who knows how to do it, is uh, licensed to do it. Uh, in some states, you have to hire a licensed, uh, usually plumber or a electrician uh, for their trade. Uh, here in Arizona, where I'm at, you don't need that. You can do all the work yourself as long as it passes. Okay, first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna measure out a round, uh, and I'll tell you why I do things, how I do them while we do it, uh, but we're gonna be using these hammer boxes. Uh, I like using the deeper ones. This is a shallow one. As you can see the difference there. Uh, this really gives you enough room to do whatever you need to do with it without having to shove, you know, 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. Let's go ahead and go over this real quick. Uh, so you can get them. I buy these in the cases because I, we're gonna also do houses and so forth. As you can see, it is a deep box. What it has on the back here are these tabs, but use a screwdriver, just pop it open, and you're all set to go. Okay, one of the first things that we need to do is actually mark out where every box is gonna go, and then we'll get them nailed in afterwards. But what I have found to be easiest is you can do this in two different ways. Now you can go, say we're gonna put a light switch in. You can go here and measure it up, and go ahead and mark it from there. I like my light switches uh, at about 44 inches. Okay, that's the bottom of them. All right, 44 inches. Then I do a uh, arrow here that shows this side. This is gonna be a two gang box because I'm gonna have the lights for the inside and one for an outside light. Okay, a better way to do this is to go ahead and get you a story stick, okay? And you want to go ahead and measure that out. You have it at 44 inches right there. And use that because you're in a shop. I'm going to put all the outlets at 44 inches at the bottom of the box. That's what we're going to start with. We'll go ahead and get this cut, get it marked out. Now you're probably saying, what about the bottom, the outlets for the bottom? Okay, I will be putting in some of those, and usually those are 12 inches off the ground. And if you're gonna go ahead and do a lot of those is you go ahead and make your another story stick for 12 inches. Plus, another good way to do it is if you're doing it on the ground, most hammers are gonna be about 12 inches to 15 inches. So you can actually use this and take this like this, and there's your mark. So using the hammer is going to give you a nice accurate measurement that you can use all the way around. See, I'm going to go ahead and start here and I'm going to actually put an electrical panel here uh, because this kind of lines up where the main panel is that I'm going to bring the feed in to do a sub panel. So coming off this, I'm going to go ahead and each wall, like this wall here, is going to have one line. This back wall will probably have two lines. This wall over here this wall over here will have one home run line. Okay, what we're gonna start with is, since we're going from this wall, we're gonna actually do the outlets on this wall, one home run line. That's a line that's gonna take care of all those outlets into the box. On the back wall, we're gonna go ahead and do two lines and do it back to the back wall. Okay, now the lights are gonna be a whole nother one line all the way around. We're gonna put out the boxes on because I'm gonna put in plug-in lights so I can move them if I need to. Okay, let's get our storage stick. We'll go around and start marking these out. When you set the boxes, make sure you put them up in there, get it where it needs to be, and you want to go ahead and go just a set so it doesn't move it. 
then and you're all set. Now for drilling the holes through the 2 by 4s I like using a spade bit like this. Unless you have an auger, that's fine. Uh, but this is usually something everybody has. Uh, and I use it in a impact. And it makes, makes it work really well. <laughs> you may not be able to use it afterwards, but... Let's go ahead and grow them so we get the wires through. Works great every time. I'm going to go ahead and keep drilling these holes. You don't need to see all that. We'll get to wiring it here in just a sec. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're daisy chaining. Now we're going to go ahead and run this one up through that hole up there and then over the panel. But this is daisy chaining. You go ahead and take it like this. You run it through your wall. Down here you can connect. Up to this, you'll connect them. This goes through the wall to this one. Then you're going to go ahead and connect the, that outlet to it, down to this one, this one, then that one. That's your end one. That's going to be one circuit. We will go ahead and, uh, like I said, run the another wire up here, up here, over, and it'll come down into this cavity right here. This is where we're going to have the panel at. So, But that's how you daisy chain, and we'll go ahead and finish it up. As you can see, I pin these anywhere where it's over six inches. Here, so when I pin these, now putting these on is to stop the screw from going in here. And with like a two by six, this will be out of the reach of the screw. But right here, it's close enough to uh, not do your drywall screw into the wire. That'd make for a bad day. bring all my wires down from all the areas this is the home runs and I mark them all so I know where they go and this is where the actual electrical box is gonna go so all the white wire as you can see uh, to the outlets there are gonna be the 15 amp all the yellow is going to be for the 20 amp I also have this running here for inside and outside outlet I go up here and go all the way back over to the back side and I'm going to have a uh, mini split back here. And over on this side, I'm running 20 amp outlets over here for the uh, dust collection on the outside and uh, compressor. Now once you have these pinned, where they're not going to go anywhere, remember to put these back in the box and shove them back in there for until later. That way when you're doing the drywall, you're not hitting the wire if you're cutting out like that. That's why you want to set them in there. Okay, let's go ahead and go over the basics of what you're going to need and why you're going to need them. <laughs> and just the things to look out for because there's a lot of things that you may not know that you should know that this may cover for you. So hang with me. We'll just kind of go over it real quick. Okay, we're going to start off with this as just your basic outlet. You have uh, your hot lead, your neutral, and your ground. You have, it's a 15 amp, 125 volt. So you don't want to go over 15 amp circuit with this. Uh, that's your basic one. Let's take the next one here is a 20 amp, 125 volt uh, outlet. Now this one here, you can tell it at a glance it's a 20 amp is because of the little cutout right here on the face of it. Uh, that's for some plugs that go that way. So it's no big deal. You just use it as a regular plug but it's a 20 amp plug. Your brass or gold colored uh, side is going to be for your hot, the black wire. Your silver is for the neutral, the white wire. Then you have the, this, the ground wire that's open. So that's your 20 amp. Now this is a 20 amp circuit breaker. Okay, it's a GFI, is what we call a GFI 
uh, where it'll reset. So if your load gets a little bit too much, it'll reset it and you won't blow out your circuit. Uh, this one here is a little different. So you want to make sure when you put these in that you read what you're doing from their, the manufacturer's paperwork inside the box. Now this has a line in, which is the same as the other ones. Gold hot, silver is your neutral. And then you have your ground at the very bottom. Ground is always green. And what would you use this one for? Okay, let me show you real quick. Okay, on this one here, as you can see, you take, you get your main line coming in and it's gonna go from here and daisy chain all the way down. You put your jiffy right here at the start and hook it up to these two without the yellow tag. And then you put the load, the rest of the line on this section here take that off and put the wires on there and what happens is this jiffy can will control this whole line so if that one there shorts out or what have you it'll trip this i always use these outside in weather concealed uh outlets so rain can't get in them okay let's go ahead and go over the wires real quick uh what this is is a 15 amp wire which is you don't want to go to 20 amp on it you don't want to you never want to overtax your wire that's why they make different size wires uh most houses most of the outlets and so forth are done with this wire uh the 14 2. uh what that means is you're going to have it's a 14 gauge uh, and you have two that you have a hot and you have a neutral and a ground wire. So it's actually three wires, but they call it 14-2. Now, so if it's a 14-3, you're gonna have another wire in here that's probably gonna be red. That's for like doing your uh, light switches that you're gonna have a switch over here and a switch over here that work the same light. Okay, next is this one here, which is uh, another most common one in the house. And this is for a 20 amp circuit. So you can go up to 20 amp on this one, which, but you never wanna go over the 20 amp on it. Now what this is, it's it's a 12-2, which is you got 12 gauge wire, same as the, the 15 amp wire. Uh, it just has a hot, neutral, and ground. And it's just a, a bigger wire. Next is, this is what they call 10-2. Okay, now you get where I'm going with this now. Uh, same type of wire, uh, black, white, and ground. And this one here is up to 30 amp. Uh, we're gonna use mostly these in this shop right now, but I just wanted to show you what, what they are. And I'll give you a, where you can look at them and see the difference if it's not marked. Usually the casing color is gonna tell you what kind of wire it is in there. Um, but older houses did not have that. Uh, it all ran in white or, you know, one color and so forth for different sizes. The white is always considered the 14 too. Uh, then you have the kind of mid yellow. See, you get two yellows now. One's a little bit different than the other, but sometimes it happens that way. And a lot of times this is orange, the bigger gauge now. But with this one here is a 20 amp and it's yellow. And like I said, this is yellow here. It's a different color yellow, but nowadays I do believe this is now going to be orange. And that's the 30 amp. But look, take a look at the difference. In sizes it's easy to tell so as you can tell the difference in the sizes as a 14 2 the 12 2 and the 10 2 as you can see the difference what are you gonna need to do wiring like this it's you should have a good wire stripper um, and cutter of course now what I'm gonna show you how to use this here in just a second and if you're gonna do a whole house full um, it's always nice to pick up one of these right here what this does is it actually strips your wires for you here let's go ahead and take one real quick and i'll show you what it'll do what you're going to do is just set it there it's going to grab the wire and strip it now you can so you go too long like that okay next thing you're going to use this and it'll cut it and next you're gonna want this is just a nice razor knife that you can cut your sheathing off with they do make a tool for that too that you just set it on there and it it strips it um, it's nice to have I do not have one here I believe <laughs> but I loaned it out to somebody that better be returning it um, 
but it's real easy with these is you know you can just kind of take it and cut it around like that and you can actually slice it down the center and then just pull it off like that um, what you don't want to do is you just kind of scorn it because you don't want to get into the wiring you don't want to get all the way into it um, then you have this paper that covers your ground wire and you just kind of clip it like that hey I just want to take a real quick second here if you're enjoying this video if you can give me that like I'd appreciate it if it's if we're giving you any value whatsoever please hit the like button it helps out the channel and it helps out the community hey I appreciate it let's get back onto it okay next what happens if you have a wire that's not long enough or you need to add something you need to have a junction box and you need to have one of these uh, what these are are wire ties now there's different sizes for this also and different colors um, okay let's go ahead and I'll show you how this works real quick okay now with these here and you need to connect them what you want to do what you want to do is you want to get them together and just start screwing this in so you start seeing that twist like that and I like to give a little tug on each one to make sure it's not coming out that way that makes that connection now they also have some that are a push on uh, connector that work well too I don't have any on hand but uh, uh, this is what they look like most plugs will have this plate on them uh, some don't like this one here so what you have to do is curl it around it and, and screw it in that way they do have these in the back uh, as you just push them in I don't like these uh, at all they come loose they they just I don't like them but you can use them if you want but most electricians are going to tell you don't ever use those now when you put these in you want it to go like this so nothing below this is exposed okay so now with the ones that don't have the plate in it you can take these and usually go like this with them so you can actually go in here and curve it around and that's how you're going to end up setting that that's why I set all of these that don't have the plate Hey everybody, I appreciate it and keep making. Hey, if you get a chance, watch this video here. I think you're really going to like it. Picked it out specially for you. Yeah, no, not you. You. There you go. See you on the next one.